you haven't blown an account. You're like the no. third girl that I've ever met that trades and like you trade well. A lot of the guys don't understand that like it's, it almost feels unsafe for me. Like I did a, a little workshop in Atlanta and I had to, okay, I'm doing it. I'm making the transition from day trading to swing trading. And dude, I kid you not, I have never seen such success in my whole eight years of trading. Like, you know, when it comes to the stock market, like if you make a thousand bucks, somebody else just lost a thousand bucks. You had to, how does that make you feel? Is that a weird thing to kind of wrestle with? And I'm like, what's up traders? Welcome to the day trading show. My name is Austin Silver. I'm your host today. We are sitting down with Tori Trays. She is the first female that we've ever had on the podcast. She's also been trading just as long as me. She's got a lot of experience from her uncle, who is actually a professional trader and still is a professional trader of over 30 years. So you guys are going to love this. We talk about funding companies. We talk about her lifestyle in Miami versus her lifestyle in Tennessee. We cover everything, her strategy, her Tradezilla is even showed here. So make sure you guys do the screen share for that. There's just a lot. It's a great conversation. I think you guys are going to love it. Make sure you're subscribed. We're going to be dropping more episodes going into 2024 than ever before. So make sure you're subscribed. And I want to let you guys know, as always, that we have open space right now in the Black Shirt Club, in our coaching program. If you're interested in working closely with me, Tom, James, and Evan, our team of funded full-time traders, just click the link down in the description for the mentorship, and there's more information there for you. But enough out of me. Enjoy the conversation with Tory Trades. All right, everybody, welcome back to the podcast. We are sitting down today. It's just me and Tori. Tori, it's good to have you. How you doing? Good, good. Thanks for having me. I caught you right at the end of your Miami trip, I know, because uh, you've been down there networking, shaking it up down there, which has been awesome to see. But I'm excited to have you on the show because, first, you're the first girl. I think we're episode 92 today, something no. like that. The first female. And it's funny because I've coached traders who are girls before, and they've done really well. But getting them to stick with trading has been the hard part. So I want to talk to you about that today. Mm -hmm. I'm curious because I'm sure you talk to a lot of females that are probably mm -hmm. in the industry, but they're very quiet. They're not going to speak up as much. And you have a good personality, so you're the right person to represent the females. So it's good. So today will be fun. And I really appreciate you giving us the time. But I'm sure there's somebody here, as much as you are very popular online, somebody listening doesn't know your story. Can you tell us where you're from, how long you've been trading and what you trade yes so my story is i've been trading for eight years my family members so i had a family member that taught me how to trade so i, didn't, I just saw um, this today your uncle yeah 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 so i didn't you know take any courses or try to do my own research to be totally honest with you if my uncle didn't teach me or he you know didn't get into trading i just don't see any alternate universe to where i get into trading like it's just i don't see it so that is the sole reason I'm into trading is because he's been able to live a lifestyle that I truly admired. And I was like, okay, I, I want to do what you do and go figure. He's a day trader. <laughs> and where um, is he now? He's in Jacksonville. Nice. Okay, cool. Yeah. So that's where I grew up, Jacksonville, um, Middleburg specifically. I don't know if you've heard of the band Red Jumpsuit Apparatus. It's of like, course. A, come on, of course. We all had our skinny jeans <laughs> cool. days where that's where we were like alternative yes. rock and the yeah. long okay, hair. Just come check on. in. Just check in. Course, okay. Yeah. So I went to the same high school as them. Go figure. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Okay. Very cool. I know. That's awesome. I know. And oh, yeah, okay. My... So uncle introduced you to trading. What does he trade? Does he trade stocks, commodities? What's his thing? So he is into futures now, but originally cool. he got into stocks. He, got he's it. been doing very long time That's close awesome. to 30 years we'll maybe say like it's maybe 27 28 now but That's he's been crazy. doing this dude he's got um he showed me like these these files these like buckets of papers to where they mail him like his transaction or he had to call to like make these transactions back in the day can you believe it's, that it's wild. it imagine blows my mind that like imagine being him and now trading today and seeing all this shit that the internet has given us. It probably melts his brain. He does it from his phone now. He does it from right. his phone now. Right. So it's probably like light. It's, I mean, it's light and day. That's, that's just a crazy difference. I think when I talk, I had a guy on the podcast, it actually came out this week. He's been trading like your uncle 25 years. I'm 28. How old are you? Um, I'm 31 now. Okay. So we're about the same age. Like to do something as long as you and me have basically been walking the <laughs> earth. Isn't it kind of crazy? <laughs> It, it truly is. It's like a veteran right there. That is truly a it veteran. Really is. And like I, I heard your on your post today, you said like he, the first thing you said, he taught you how to lose. That's that was so number one. Number I, love one. That. I love that. Cause like, like, I mean, we're going to be losers. And like, he, he made it almost comical. He's like, 
I like to lose. I would say it out loud. Like I'm a loser. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. And but it, it is actually a really, really good. I wish I would have been introduced to trading that way. I've been trading for eight years, similar to you, but I was introduced to it the wrong way. I was introduced to it all just about making money, not, no one talking about losses. The people that showed me what trading was never spoke about losses. And now people like you and me are putting the good word out there that are saying, hey, if you want to get into trading, you have to be good at taking losses. Do you think – I'm going to take this a, into a deep question first. Yeah. Have any other concepts or principles other than like taking loss as well from your uncle, have they stuck with you till today? Yeah. Oh, yeah. One that I say – pretty often is the phrase don't know, don't care. And that is kind of truly being able to let go, let go, like separate yourself from having to, for this one trade to like make it to go. Like we truly don't know the direction or how long price is going to go in a certain direction. And we don't care. Like we, we've got to truly not care. So don't know, don't care has been like the motto for sure. I love so that. I'm, I love that. And don't know, don't care has been the ones that really stuck with me. Well, because it's like there's an – I think it's an Albert Einstein saying, I think. I don't remember. But it was like I know what I know, and I know what I don't know. That's the same thing. True, true, exactly. Yeah, yeah I love that because it's like focus on what you know, get better, get bigger, grow in that. And then the other stuff, yeah, could you figure it out? Of course. But mm -hmm. you want to stick in what you know. Okay, that's good. All right, so that's a, a deep question. I like that answer. Now I got a fun question for you. Because you're a girl in this space, I can only imagine – how your DMs must be the weirdest place right now. Am I fair to think that? You are You are fair to think that. And one thing that I, <laughs> I've come to realize is the, the trading aspect and the social media aspect, completely different. Like to be a female trader makes no difference. Makes no difference. Like you no. could be asexual and be a trader and results are going to be the same. But when it comes to social media, that's a little bit different. That's like a completely different ballgame. So you get like, you get, criticized and uh condemned and just there's there's so many things where people are like you truly aren't making money trading like they just don't believe it and they I'm don't like, want to believe it right they don't they don't want to and it's like yeah. okay you know what i i have come to find now that you cannot win i could so, show this i could show this you can't win you'll never make everybody happy so what's the ratio of like actual people that are talking to you interested in trading versus like sign, trying to send you a dick pic it's football season <laughs> Everybody's excited, but you're probably paying like 40 to 50, maybe 60 bucks a month through YouTube TV or Dish TV or NFL Season Pass, whatever it's called, just to watch the games, right? Well, for $10 a month, you can come watch me and other full-time traders live all week long, London session and New York session. Again, you're paying 50 bucks a month to watch football that brings you really no financial return. You probably lose your sports bets while you're watching, or you could come pay I should say end, you could come pay $10 a month. So during the week, you can be learning, making money, and really being a part of live trading with experienced traders. That's what we want to bring to the community with this ASFX TV product. And we would love to have you join us. So click the link down below, take the three-day free trial, check it out. Again, totally free. And you'll see it's more than worth the $10 a month. And then you'll be able to enjoy your NFL games and your ASFX TV streams. <laughs> I would say it's the ratio is not as crazy as you think. We'll go with okay. like maybe... One to mm, one to five. Um, that's a lot. All right. That's a lot. That's crazy. You know, because it's funny because I, I, when I was thinking about the podcast, I'm like, I got to have the questions that are fun. And then I got to have the questions that are serious. And of course, I'm going to ask that because like every guy is wondering the same thing because I worked with a, a firm who had a woman that was representing them and they had security around her at all times because Dude, her DMs got so crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So even, you know, thinking about going and speaking at these workshops. Like I truly, a lot of the guys don't understand that like it's, it almost feels unsafe for me. Like I did a, a little workshop in Atlanta and I had to make sure that I had, you know, a safe group around me because like, I just can't, like I'm posting, Hey, I'm going to speak at this workshop in Atlanta. I'm you like, gotta be ah, careful. I can't do that anymore. And I don't you think a lot careful. of guys in space realize that I need to have more precautions. I need to be a little bit more on the safe side than the other influencers. So that's a great point. What I do, just to give you a, a little thing, for all of the events I do, I only will, like let's say I'm hosting a free event. I actually just did one in Atlanta last week. I won't oh, post the address publicly on the Eventbrite thing if it's a free RSVP. I will only 
send the address to the people who sign up so I can see all the emails that I'm sending and see if anything looks funny and maybe just remove that person. And just, that's my like safe way around it. We had a meetup, James, one of the guys I work with, he's in South Africa. I don't know how much you know about South Africa, but it's rough. Like it's really, really rough. And yeah. like, he, like there are, he says a first world country with third world tendencies. And he made sure he was like, we will have people that will try to roll up on this met. So we made sure to keep it quiet, keep the location separate from the people that were just shit starters. You know what I mean? Trouble, trouble, yeah. troublemakers. What was it yeah. like at the, uh, the, the chart addicts event? What is that called? The FX summit? That was a big yeah. deal. That was right when my son was born. That's why I didn't make it to meet all you guys. But how uh, was that? Dude, it was, it's gotta be the coolest. That was one of the coolest things I've ever been to. So like really? I, with, with my uncle teaching me how to trade and not being so to give you like a little bit of backstory, um, you know, eight years ago, like it was a very uncomfortable thing to talk about finances on social media. It was just like a faux pas. Like if you did it, it was like not very tasteful. Or people so, thought you were scamming. Like if you were yeah. talking about money on social media, you were scamming people. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So like my, my bubble of, you know, who I saw trading or who people that I look up to or even networked with, I, I kid you not, it was me, my uncle, and like my aunt knows a little bit, my sister. Probably better that way. That was it. That was it. Yeah. Like I didn't have this, this broad, like audience to talk to when it came to like networking and stuff. So now that I've got this bigger audience, like it's just, it's, it's such a game changer. And I'm going to be totally honest with you, Austin. I lost train of thought. I don't know where I was going with that. That's one. okay. It's a, no, no, it's okay. Cause now you got me, <laughs> I was talking about the chart addicts event, the FX oh, summit and meeting okay, everybody yes, there. Yes, yes. Okay. Let's let me go back to it. Let me go back yeah, to yeah. it. So like seeing an entire, not even just room full, but like, I mean, what do we call it? A conference, a convention center. Convention hall. Papers. Sure. Yeah. yeah. It was the coolest thing every single person in that room or in that center did the same thing so like imagine i was on a high i was on a complete high we I were could just tell. talking about the same stuff i'm like oh my god like these people do what i do it's just so cool it was i was on a high the whole time <laughs> and out of the high were there any lows because i've heard like i had a guy at the atlanta meetup last week he told me he was like you know i really liked uh, i think it was roy roy is the guy that runs chart addicts yeah. He was like, I loved his story. I loved his thing. And then he named a couple other people that spoke. And he was like, I could tell that something is not truthful with this guy. X, Y, we won't say names here. Did yeah, you get yeah, that yeah. vibe as well? Um, I, you know, I've got a very, just cause I've been doing this for so long. I could have a conversation with someone and, and truly just know right off the right away. Yep. But it's, you know what? It didn't, luckily I'm not in the mess. I'm not in the mix. I, I've got my path. I'm gonna stick to it. And that makes it a lot easier, but I could, I could absolutely see that. I mean, it's in the back of my head and as I'm getting more involved in this, this industry, not even just the, um, you know, the other influencers, but the industry itself, like, yeah. you know, the, the prop firms, the brokers, the, the tech, um, the platforms, like I'm kind of getting into that so I can see, okay, now truly I I've got an idea of what the industry is really like, but I've, I got a path that I've been on and I'm just going to tunnel vision it. A hundred percent. So tell me about this new accelerator boot camp thing that you've just started. Cause this is a new thing for you, right? Where you're kind of yeah. coaching people in 21 days. Yes, correct. What's so in a live stream. So I've done in the past just one on one. So me okay. and one other student, and um, we'll we'll meet like one time a week. We'll kind of go over okay all of their trades that they placed, and then I can see all right after an entire week. Let's see like what what's the common denominator here? Are you getting in your trades a little bit too late? Are you getting in too early? Can you not explain why you got into the trade? So it's it's not as intimate in that sense where I don't get to see every single person's trade, but like now I'm able to take on you know more people at one time. And it felt very streamlined. So I'm used to doing live streams, talking about my trades. So this is essentially like a combo of those two things. So doing live streams and one-on-ones. So it's like a, a combination of the two. So Love I've got that. this group of students that I am just live streaming for 21 days straight. We're going over like psychology, um, trend lines. So my strategy is, you know, essentially just trend line breakouts for the most part. And, you know, how do we manage our risk? Um, and then essentially just going over, okay, now let's apply this to real time. So the people, you know, you've got a course where it's pre-recorded and you get the idea, you get the concept, but then it's different seeing it applied to like real time market data. Like, okay, this is what oil looks like today. Now this is what it looks like tomorrow. This is how we still apply it, you know, throughout the different days or the week. So it's been the coolest, coolest combination. And it, it feels very natural. That's awesome. I think that it's a great way to teach people. It's similar to what we do. Our We have a mentorship that's 12 weeks long, but we also sell a course. And after you take the course, you can buy a $45 a month subscription to watch us trade live every day. We're four of yeah. us that are funded with the strategies. Use them live. Because I think like you just said, it's one thing to give someone a course and say, here you go. Here's a strategy. 
there's a whole different ball game to say, hey, this is the strategy applied in today's market based on this going on and this exactly. going on and this going on. It's totally different. It's much more exactly. uh, applicable. So now any major success stories so far from that? Anybody passing funding challenges or seeing some big payouts, anything like that that you could share? Um, so it just, the last day was yesterday. Um, okay, so it just did, finished, we so went, it's fresh. Yeah, yeah. But we just went over like our wins. So the last day was like, okay, let's let's bring it all together. What are some of the wins? So we've got some people that passed challenges. Some people placed their first live trade. Um, their Which is still a win. Trade. That's still a big win. Yeah. Like oh my God, 100%. such a win. 100%. Oh, I was, so, I was the moon. With those guys who are passing challenges and the guys that are doing well, I'm sure there's commonalities. Do you see any commonalities that stand out with the guys that maybe didn't do as well? Because I always have a couple of guys in the group that don't succeed and don't take mm -hmm. as much. At, like they paid the same price, but they don't have that same lighter fluid on the fire. So could you speak? Because I'm sure people are listening about like, what are the characteristics of, I think it's more important to highlight the lo the losers, the people who could have done a little better. What, what characteristics did you see there? The, the first thing that I could tell is the ones that have so much information, like they have just taken so many courses. They've got so many strategies. They truly try to put so much into like what I'm teaching them. I'm like, please just let's just wipe it away just for these 21 days. Like, let's try to just focus on it. Which They're is like, so I hard. Yeah, I know. Like, I get it. It's I get easier. It. I, I, I've had guys that I've been coaching that have been trading for 14 years, still not profitable. They are the hardest ones to coach. I believe that absolutely versus a newbie. They just, oh my, the ones that are just learning a strategy. Oh, they're going to go so far. <laughs> they do amazing. They do amazing. Yeah. Okay. So, so that's a good thing. Information overload can kind of hold you mm -hmm. back and, and stuff like that. Anything else for the losers that maybe held them back? Not um, being active enough, thing, not asking you enough questions, bothering you enough. The, I would say definitely the ones that, um, so like, let's say that they weren't able to attend many of the live, live classes. And then they also didn't go back and watch the recorded version. So I'm like, well, I, like, what do you want? So no. Jeez, like, what did you pay for then, bro? Like, what are you doing? Yes. Yeah. Yes, but that's yes. all. Listen, I, I had a retreat. So we did a retreat in Orlando where I just rented a house and had a bunch of people that were in our community that wanted to trade together for a couple of days. We all hung out and had a pool and everything. I had three people or two people pay for that in full and never show up, never answering email, never say why they weren't coming, never asked even for money back, paid and didn't show up. Is that crazy? So it no matter really what you do, you will have people like that. That's why I knew that you would have a good answer for that because there's always going to be people that do very well and the people that don't. And I think, you know, it's always about just timing and, and incentive and things like that. So there's a couple of different sure. variables, but those are very, you know, two important things. So let's go, let's back up a little bit because that was good on, on your business and everything. And like you said, you're in Miami now, originally in Tennessee. And do you think you're going to be moving to Florida permanently? I mean, there's really no reason to because Tennessee is the state tax you know, you don't have a state tax right. there, so it's not bad, right? And it's nice weather True. there still too. I'm I'm debating, so I'm gonna go back home on Wednesday okay. and mall things over. If anything, if I if I do think I want to make this move to Miami, I gotta stay in an Airbnb for another month. Like I want to truly be like when you get here, you're you're in the honeymoon phase. I got here first week, I'm like, let's rally. I'm ready, moving right. in. Right, right. And then after a few weeks, then the honeymoon phase kind of dies down. And then you realize, oh, okay, most of these other people that you're going to network with, like they kind of stay in their own bubble. So it's not as, it's just, it's definitely that honeymoon phase. So it's, it's worn off. And now I can think a little more clearly. A hundred percent. And I, I think that as much as Miami has its pros, there's a lot of Miami, like keeping up with the Joneses. We're like, at least on my side of Florida, it doesn't feel like that as much where it's like, if you, my side of Florida comparatively, I feel like is like the people who become a little bit financially independent, at least the guys that I'm getting to know, they become a little independent, but they don't want the hustle and bustle of Miami, but they don't want the nothingness of, sorry, Jacksonville. You know what I mean? So like, <laughs> this is a, a, a nice common middle ground where you can get, you know, you're on the nice co coast on the beach, but still have some stuff going on. So Florida's a great place, but I think my wife and I now we're looking at buying land in Tennessee. You have Florida, you want Tennessee. You're in Tennessee, you want Florida. Dude, we can't I, make I, up I, our I, minds. We just want change. That's what it is, right? <laughs> I get it. Always. I get it. <laughs> Always. Okay. So that's good on, on your business and your background. Let's talk about the way you trade. You mentioned a little bit already, you trade a simple trend line breakout and kind of strategy. So we'll definitely dive into that. But first big picture, swing trading, day trading, which one do you prefer? And then what markets do you prefer? Because I always see you tweeting about oil, posting about oil. That's my main man, oil. That's Fruit your main? oil. Okay. Yep. Um, so I made the transition this year specifically. Um, I even made it public in which I think that truly helps hold you accountable. Like accountable. when you- yep. When you post about things, it's like it, it changes everything because now you've got eyes on you. They're like, okay, how's it going? Checking in on yep. you. Yep. Um, so this year I made it public. I was like, okay, I'm doing it. I'm making the transition from day trading to swing trading. 
And dude, I kid you not, I have never seen such success in my whole eight years of trading. Like really? this is time frame. This is it. This is what I was wow. meant for. Was swing okay, trading. Why? why? It very well could be now my goals for it. So we'll kind of get into why it's been better now, but coming into it, the reason why I even wanted to transition one, I wanted to have less chart time, like in this, in the four hour time frame, like, dude, you, you can only watch that candle for so long until you got hundred you know, percent, hundred percent So less chart time. And then I wanted to, you know, just be able to stay in my profits for longer. So obviously higher time frame, you're staying in longer. Um, you're doing your chart analysis in more of like this. And this is just me processing it out loud. But like, when you get that zoomed out time frame, it just feels like you're not so, uh, in that five minute time frame or that one hour is just, there's so much noise or so much going on just for me personally. So coming out, like I just felt like I was taking a step back. I'm like, okay, the four hour time frame. These are the bigger moves. Like, How many trades just, were you taking a day before you made the transition? Were you trading a lot? And then it kind of was like relief. It yes. So I'd say okay. December, the December before I was probably placing like, We'll say on average, maybe three trades a day, which I know still doesn't sound like a lot, but like- No, that's a lot for, even for, I'm a oh. day trader. That's a lot. I think so. I, okay. I mean, we'll put a guy, the guys that are doing like 10 to 15 trades a day. I don't know many traders that are profitable as retail traders doing 10 or 15 trades a day. It's very hard to stay consistent with that. So yeah. for like a day trader, like I'll have one trade some days, two trades some days, and then no trades for a couple of days. So yes. I think three, yeah. three is a lot. Three, if you do three trades a day and you document that closely for a week, you are fucking tired by Friday. Oh, dude. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Now there's still, it, there's, there's still that same type of exhaustion and tiredness in the um, swing trading. Swing, that I'm coming to 100%. But um, it's just, I felt like I was leveling up in a sense. Um, It just felt like I was taking a step back. Like my, there was not as much anxiety. Like it just felt like it just fit. Like it's slower. It, 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 you liked it because it was a little slower. Yeah. 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 Okay. And with and that, does that, I'm sorry. Good. I was gonna say it helped because I'm, I trade with just alerts on my trend lines. So now I'm getting less alerts. There could be, you know, days before I actually get one, you know, before price actually breaks out of a trend on the four hour time frame. So I'm only looking at charts when my alerts go off on my phone. Wow. So now will that limit you to not having a lot of trades often? Because if you're just looking at oil on a four hour, it could take a, like a week to set up sometimes, yeah. right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And you like that. Oh my God. I love that. So, okay. See, it's good for people to hear. Yeah. Yeah. So that was the idea coming into it. I'm like, all right. I, I even kind of gave myself this goal, which I know sometimes I'll like, I'll, I'll, I'm not suggest it, but then I do suggest it. And so like giving yourself a, a daily, okay, I need to hit this number every day. I don't suggest, I don't think you're, you're going to try to trade to make up for it. And 100%. it's going to break off. So, but I did come into it with just an idea. I was like, okay, you know what, if I could place somewhere around like five, $5,000 trades a month in this swing trade. I'm like, th that would be the ultimate goal. And like, we've, we've made it. That's, that's where I'm at now. And it is the most, it's just this, the chart time is minimal. I'm only trading when I've got the best setups, when, you know, trend lines on a four hour time frame are getting broken. It's just, there's nothing. You're letting like the it. trades come to you versus yeah. forcing the market to try to give you money every day, which is what everybody is doing. So I think that's what everyone listening, that's what I want everyone to hear is like, she's not forcing herself. Oh, I woke up time to find a trade. She's like, no, I'll let oil come back to my line. I'll make this trade four days later and I'll be right. Yeah. And you'll win. I had a guy at the meetup in Atlanta last week. He's been in our mentorship group. The reason I went to Atlanta was literally just for him because he's from South Africa. He was in Arizona doing some work with his IT job. And he was like, let's meet. So I said, I'll come to you know Atlanta. It's halfway. It's easier for him to connect out, blah, blah, blah. So we yeah. end up making it a whole meetup. But we're sitting there talking and of course he's talking up our mentorship, making me look good. But really what made me look the best was that he said, I've taken four trades this month while I've been traveling. It's never been easier. I feel like I've let the market come to me and I've won all four trades and he's up like three and a half percent because he puts a good amount of risk on these trades. Three percent, even two percent over four trades with no losses while traveling is incredible. Beautiful. And it's because he's like you did not forcing trades. Let them come to him. Oh, I'm busy today. I can't do it. Can't do it. But then on the days where yeah. he could pay attention, if it's there, he's in the trade and he's making money on it. So you said exactly it like to the T. That's exactly. And my month is very similar. I think we're looking at, and I wanted to see if you had time, if I could um share my trade Zella just to 100%. To yeah. 100%. So, we'll pull that up. Now, it's not always that I'll have only winners for the month, but it's just being able to wait for the setup to come to you. Um, and then there's going to be opportunities or there's going to be times where I get my alert and I'll just pass on it. Like I'm, and it's totally okay. And to have that, like a uh, self-awareness or just like 
discipline. I don't know what, what word I'm looking for, but just be able, yeah, just be like, I see the opportunity. I'm, I'm going to pass on it. And like well, waiting for. And I think it comes because now you're in a good spot. Like you feel confident you're trading. You've got your other business, your education business up and running. So money's good. Yeah. You're not stressed to make money from your trading. And I'm sure you would agree the guys that are stressed to make money from their trading, they always struggle instantly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That was one, one theme that I had in my social media this year was that that was kind of a pivot. So not only was my swing trading just, oh my gosh, it's just like finding your soulmate. It's such a cool feeling to find that time frame that just the most peaceful I have ever been in my trading. But then I want to talk about also the pressure is off my trading. The pressure is off. So there's, there's probably like combinations. It's when you're trading to truly like pay that rent or make that, you know, car payment, it's, it messes with your psychology. The strategy could be the same, but the, the psychology, there's just so much pressure. And then having none, now there's just, you truly wait for setups. You can pass up on setups. Like there's just so many different aspects to your psychology when you remove all of the pressure. A hundred percent. So what do you think of this idea? Strategy is what it is. There's, I would even argue an infinite number of profitable strategies think, that could be implemented. Okay, so you agree with that. Do you think then- that trading is not defined by our ability to win, but our ability to take losses. Like you said at the beginning, oh, how yeah. well can you handle losses? Absolutely. And so even then, yeah, into that, yeah. not only your ability to handle losses, but your ability to truly like hone in on one thing, one strategy, perfect that, see if it works. Now I know there's going to be some that truly don't like being able to find my, you know, my time frame. This is it. This is my time frame. but truly being able to hone in on that one strategy, that one thing, because the types of strategies, like you said, infinite, infinite. Why do you think that is so hard for people? Why is it so hard to focus on one thing? Because we all have short-term attention span, ADD, out the ass nowadays. <laughs> I'd say that too, but it's always like the grass is greener on the other side. When you see mm -hmm. a trader making money on a different strategy, you want to just move over to that. Right. And think, that gosh, is so true. Thank gosh, I just, my uncle was like, he, okay, so first one was like, okay, um, we're going to learn how to lose. But even before that, he was like, what I teach you, like what I show you, I have experience in all of these other strategies. I've used all these other indicators. I have tried everything. What I show you is going to be it. Don't go searching for, you know, the grass is green on the other side. Don't go searching. But you barely for have indicators off. on your chart now, right? Isn't that the, oh, is I have that the kick? I've used right, that's the kick. He's like, I've tried it all and now you need none of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's like being able to truly, and I believed him. I believed him. So I, that's now there were huge. opportunities you trusted where I him. saw. Yes. Yes. I saw other influencers, you know, they're, they're trading like, um, Fibonacci and, yep, uh, ICT, SMC. I'm, I'm just now learning that. I think those are the same, but I, I, truly I think don't they're have the same. You and me are probably in the same boat with that. We, it, it's basically the FBI to me. I mean, I'm not very familiar with them. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not either. But the fact that I, I truly stuck with just one strategy and perfected it, something as simple as trend lines should be able to go to show that like, you can make a strategy work if you just perfect it. There's modifications, sure, very slight ones that I've made that are a little bit different than my uncle's, but it's just, it, it, there's no secret sauce. The grass no, is always- there really isn't. And, and you're so right. Great point. And I would say too, like I've talked to ICT guys, people that hate him, people that love him. I've had him on the podcast. A lot of what he teaches is very, like they, there's a, a move in there called a breaker block, I think. Really, if you take away all the stuff they do, it's a break and a retest is how you and me probably oh, would look at it. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. you put a, a context to it, a new language to it, it creates a new thing. And people believe that is to be the strategy. Whatever you want to call it, these are all, like we said, strategy. But what ends up happening to a lot of these ICT guys and, and even people that trade without indicators like us, they end up just either over trading, oversizing, they go off tilt eventually. It's the psychology, yeah. which goes back to our point of how well are you handling losses? How many people mm -hmm. have you worked with that'll take a 1% trade, lose, and finish the day down 3 or 4%? <laughs> all the time. <laughs> but wait, we forgot. I forgot to highlight the biggest thing of this whole fucking interview. You haven't blown an account. You're like the no. third girl that I've ever met that trades and like you trade well. And all of the girls I've ever worked with, ask my wife, she remembers Brielle from years ago, never blew an account. Lindsay, our, our woman that works from Scotland, never blew an account. I was like, what? It's just, it's gotta be like, it's gotta be that, uh, I don't know if it's, I mean, this has to be a male, female thing, but it's just like, we're not gonna put it all on the line. Like never. bet it all. Never, like, no. never. We're no. so conservative. Like yep. I have so much faith in my system and what my uncle has taught me that like we have these things called safety lines 
we are never going to blow an account. Like it's just not possible with this strategy. Right. Cause you can stop yourself. See, men can't stop themselves. We're, we're, <laughs> we're, we're, we're awful. We cannot stop hundred percent. It's, it's totally 150% a man versus woman thing where a man will have the ego and the, and the bravado to be like, even if I lose this, I'll just do it again. You know, where a woman would be like, well, we could just stop and try again tomorrow. And that right there is the, is the yes. difference maker in training. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's some, have you ever met or heard of uh, Linda Rashke? Mm -mm. All right, you got to write her name down. She's very, very, very well known as an older woman rest. who's a trader. Yep. And she trades futures and she trades commodities. And I've seen her post about oil. She's like, she's like the, one of the goats. And then another woman, I really like her stuff. Ruth Roosevelt. She wrote two good trading books. One, 12 okay. Habitudes of Highly Successful Traders. And the other one is called Exceptional Trading, The Mind Game. And that one's really, really good. They're both very, very good. But those are two okay. women that I think have like really put out you could call them like womenly tendencies, like being conservative. You use the word conservative. I use the word conscientious, like care about yeah. what you're doing. Women are very conscientious. They, Those two women preach that in their books. If you don't care about this, you will treat it like a hobby and you will gamble your money away. But if you care about it and treat it like a business, especially if you've run another business in the past, if you're a real estate person, now you're coming into trading. If you know how yeah. to treat something like a business, you can have those safety lines in play that definitely keep you safer. So great point. Great point. What do you think about all the ICT stuff? I have to ask. What are your thoughts on um, that? Well, well, luckily I don't, I don't have any, I don't even know what the strategy is. Now, the Me only neither. opinion that I do have about it is just that um, the community itself has been a little bit negative towards me and I'm, a I'm not sure. Oh, well, okay. A little, yes. It's just, they, they, they laugh at my trend lines and I'm just They're like, a cult, bro. they're just a cult. That's what it feels if you don't like. do what, what they do. You're an idiot. That's what it feels like. Now I don't, I don't know what they do. So I don't know right. what this is about, but that's the only experience that I do have with them. Do you know the story about him? The guy that's I don't. Him? I don't. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll enlighten you. The short version is from what I understand years ago, he was going around telling everyone that he was kidnapped by the people that run the markets and they took him to a warehouse or something. And then they told him how the markets work and then they let him go free. And then they let him put it on YouTube for free for all of us. I don't believe so, you. But right no, I can't <laughs> believe that. I would need some, again, I, I, I'm a trader. Everything I do is based on data. My systems are backed up. You're going to tell me a story. Great. Show me some proof. Show me a scar that they cut you up a little bit, brother. Show me a, show me something, you know, but otherwise it's just good marketing. But when you peel back his marketing, even guys that like I had Sam Cavanaugh, Sam KB, he was been on the podcast, Sam ripped him up. But then at the end, Sam goes, but if you're a new trader, his shit is better than most of the other shit on the internet. So it's like, I, I, I hate when guys that are good traders sometimes or have good ideas feel like they need to do fluffy marketing. Like just do, do yeah. like Gary V says, do good value. Be the tallest building because you're the tallest building. Don't tear everybody else down Absolutely. to be the tallest building, you know? And you do yes. that really well. You never, I never see you beefing with people like me. I'll never entertain the beef. I don't need any negativity with the Twitter fingers. It's just not what I'm trying to do. I'll just, I'll just, <laughs> disap I'll disappear. I'll get off social media and just trade. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't need to be exactly. on social media. Right. Exactly. I am right there with you. <laughs> 100%. Yeah, I figured we would see the same way. But like you said, all these different concepts, whether it's ICT, SMC, all can be profitable, but it really comes down to mindset. So do you have any recommendations for listeners on how to improve trading psychology, how to improve your mindset? What would be like your go-tos? Because that's a very corny, cliche question, of yeah, course, but yeah. do you have any like, listen to this podcast, it really helps, or this book really made a difference for you? Anything direct like that? Um, I would say I don't have a specific podcast or book or strategy or anything since I'm I am so you're in the bubble you're in your bubble which is good you're in your own lane yes yes um but the only thing is uh trading in the zone I have found has very similar concepts to what my uncle teaches and I would actually be fascinated to hear if he's even read it I wonder how crazy wonder. would that be if read it and it's just it makes sense like all these things sense. all sense I'd, I'd have to ask him I don't I don't know if he's read that before but I think having Having the mindset, there's there's a few things I would say. Um, going back to the don't know, don't care, we like truly releasing yourself of you know that trade has to work out. This has to be the one. Like this, there's never going to be the one. Like we we're just looking for consistency. The market ebbs and flows. Like we're just trying to capitalize on these movements, and that's kind of the motto here. If a trade doesn't work out, it's it, that's okay. Like it's absolutely okay. And I think maybe just releasing the um the resentment towards the market, you know point your finger at the market. Like it's never, it's never the market. The market is its own beast. It does its thing. It's going to always do its thing. Whether, whatever conspiracies people have about how it moves, if it's the market makers, if it's supply and demand, if it's 
who knows what it, if whatever it is, like we don't have control over it. We're just trying to capitalize on whatever it does. So I think that's just releasing yourself of like the, the, the trying to make the market go in a certain direction or, or trying to figure out what makes it move. Just none of that matters. Like truly apply your strategy and capitalize on the movements. Do you identify as a trader or as a pattern identifier who doesn't know the outcome of their trades, but is meant to just take this specific pattern when it happens? Because I like to tell traders that. What do you think of that? Is that stupid? Should I stop saying that? No, I don't think it's stupid. I think um, there is there's strategies that focus specifically on patterns, like looking at, okay, price looks like it's doing this, and then we'll either break out. I don't know much about the patterns themselves, but I mean, obviously, I think they work. There's, there's strategies. I, I, I give due diligence to every strategy, but mine specifically is more so, I guess it truly is a form of patterns. Like you're looking for trends and then when trends get broken, you're like, okay, well now we've got to change our mind. We're not thinking sure. trends. But you're going to go in the direction of saying it's more price. Yes. Yeah. I'd say more price, more so than pattern itself. Sure. Okay. But so you're a price identifier, not a trader. I don't like the word trader because all we're all trading is time. That's it. You're not getting, yeah. I'm not trading hair ties for more hair ties. You know what I'm saying? Like I got yeah. one, this is, we're not really trading anything other than our time at the desk. We're identifying a price move, a pattern, something that is a trigger signal. Yet mm -hmm. we think when we see that we're supposed to know the outcome. That's like one of the paradoxes of trading when we Dude, don't, like you said. It. That yeah. is exactly it. You never we're know. We're just taking the signal. We're putting ourselves in position for whatever the outcome is going to be and having those parameters in place for if this doesn't work out. But we're simply just putting ourselves in position. We're we're taking that signal. We're I mean, it's it's truly That's that it. was beautifully said. Beautifully said. Thanks. Good. I'll take it. <laughs> what do you think about um risk per trade and mm. profit return on a monthly basis? I had some people hit me on Instagram today and said, ask her what she thinks of an average monthly return. What would be that answer? And then if you could speak on that and then risk per trade, because of course they go hand in hand. If you risk one percent per trade, your monthly return is going to be different than the guy that risks half a percent or one Dude, or point yeah. one percent. Absolutely. Absolutely. And since there is, there's so many different account sizes and that's like one of the biggest things when people get into trading, they're like, okay, well, I'm only trading with 500 or I'm trading with 5,000 or I'm trading with 10 or I'm trying to just trade with $5 is probably not even possible. <laughs> but I know what you mean. I know what you mean. <laughs> yes. And this is going to sound strange, but maybe this is truly why like I'm, I'm able to get to where I am, but the, the risk to reward, the RR, the um, percentage of risk, it is, it is different every single time, every trade. It is dependent on where the price is um, in conjunction to my trend lines. So if let's say, um, you know, we've got, we're trending upwards and it's easier to, to show than use my arms, but let's say that the price, so I've got two lines. I'm always trying to figure out, I've got a downward trend and an upward trend. And I'm trying to figure out bullish bearish trend. And I'm trying to figure out which trend is going to be the one, which one is actually going to follow. So the trend line that gets crossed is going to be the one that, okay, this is invalid. This isn't the trend. So we may be following along the other one, but it's how close the price is in conjunction to the opposing trend line. So it could be very close when it breaks. It could be far away when it breaks. So these are going to be higher risk or lower risk trades, um, but it's very dynamic. Like this strategy is, is truly dynamic. That makes there a lot of sense though, because I've seen your pictures with conflicting trend lines and I never understood what you were doing. But now when you just said that, I understand. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm trying to be ahead of the curve. I'm trying to like, figure, okay, which one is going to be the trend? Which one is it actually going to follow? So I've always got downward and upward. And I want to let the price show me, okay, it's following along the upward or it's following along the downward. Which one's getting broken? And which one gets broken is invalidated or is invalidated, but that's the one that gets me into the trade. And then the opposing trend line, the one that it now is following. Is target. Is keeping my safe, it's my safety line. Stop. Is what I call yeah, it. yeah. So then you're moving <laughs> stop underneath that. Exactly. Yes, that is, that is truly it. So it is, it is very dynamic. And I was, to be honest, at first I was embarrassed to talk about this because I the the trading community is so so analytical. They need A plus B equals C, and I'm like, I don't have that, guys. It's it is truly so dynamic. So like my my trades are, are different every time. It is just where the price is in conjunction to my trend lines. It's either right. going to be a higher risk or lower risk trade depending on how close it is to the trend line. That makes sense. So you're gauging probabilities based on that. So what about percentage? Like on a typical day. Or are you risking 1%, half a percent when you see these trades? Because you're not getting them that often. So are you hitting them heavier because you're not getting them that often? I would say so. Yeah, yeah. I would say about 2%. And actually, yeah. could, we, could we go into some trades this time? Yeah, 100%. Oh, right. You should be able to screen share right now. And then for everybody okay. listening, make sure you tune to Spotify or YouTube so you can see the screen share. And oh. if you're driving, don't look at the screen share. Please don't. Don't do it. 
All right, we are going to share screen. I'm using my iPad, but let's see if this works. Start broadcast okay. and tell me when you can see it. I think I've yep. already got, um, I've already yep. got trades up. Let's beautiful. go to it. I see. Yep. 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 Beautiful. Okay, cool. We're, we're in. Okay. We see it. So this is, this is August so far. Now it's, you're not always going to get, um, winner after winner, banger after banger, but this is my typical month right here. So we're looking at the goal ish is about 20 K. So we've hit 22. I could be done for the month. Like even That's if great. I get some opportunities, some signals to get in, I could be, you know, totally satisfied with where I'm at now for this month. Yeah. But you can see that like beginning of the month, I got a signal to go. I can't remember if it was a long position or short position in oil. And then for the next week, I, I got maybe one or two signals and I was, I, I passed on them. And another thing that I don't know if many traders talk about is this, um, almost this like intuition that comes with, you know, trading a certain pair or a certain, you know, uh, commodity Discretion. for so long. You've been trading yes. for so long. You have enough experience. It's discretion. Oh, I don't need yeah. this one. I don't know why. Sometimes you don't know yes. why, but that I don't want exactly this one. It. Yep. Yes, yep. that's exactly it. Yes, 100%. So with oil, I've just, I have developed this discretion or this intuition to where I, if I see a break and I don't feel good about it, I'm just, I'm going to pass on it. And that's totally okay. And yep. um, I think that's kind of what was in play here for that week of no trading. I got maybe two other signals and just decided, uh, that's okay. We're, we're going to pass on them. But yeah, this and then look the at the third week of the month where you get busy. Like you have one, yes. two, three, five, six. Exactly. Oh, yeah. so the ones that are break even, those are, I think that's maybe where I got into the trade, but didn't close the same day. So we, those are just, um, we got to cancel those out. I got to get with trades. Yeah, okay. Pop that up. Still, still three trades after a no trade week. A lot of people right? would have a no trade week and come back and over trade. They would trade exactly. like crazy and get, and go yeah. nuts. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. And let's see if we can kind of break down some. What of is CLV things. and CLU and PLV? Is that, uh, yeah, what are they? I don't even know. Can you guess what PL is? I'm going to guess, you know, SLV has me thinking of silver, like the ETF Correct. or whatever. Okay. Uh -huh. So P is, is that platinum or palladium? It is. It's platinum. Yeah. Me, no. <laughs> and then C is copper? Um, C is crude oil. CL. Crude oil. Okay. I don't know what okay. the, I'll, I'll be honest, I don't know what the L is, but crude okay. oil. Okay. So let's see if we can kind of look into these. Yeah, show us one. And shout out to Tradezilla. We love uh, Umar. We love Tradezilla. I actually just spoke All with him about bringing them on as a, I want to get them to sponsor the podcast, but they're integrating into our mentorship program where everyone that comes into our mentorship program now gets this for a year because like, this is the best. Like this just tells you everything. There is nothing like it. We could do a whole it's, podcast about this. Agreed, agreed. I am an There's analytical so nerd. So many features, <laughs> right. So you have trade replay and you have all these tags you can do and all this crazy mm -hmm. stuff. Either, it's everything. It's amazing. Okay. So this yeah. is a cool one. So $10 commissions, 2,500 P and L. Yeah. So this is interesting. So a nice sell here from 81 real quick, before mm -hmm. you go over this one, just for a yeah. second, fundamentally, what are you doing with all this news? Like, can you, cause I have guys that trade oil and mm -hmm. like as day traders and they don't know what to follow the Saudis, the OPEC, the, all the, the petroleum reserves in the United States. Like, do you follow any of that? Is any of that important? Can you just educate us on that if all, at all? Oh, absolutely. So that was um, in my uncle boot camp. Uh, he called it the princess protection program. <laughs> uh, in, in, this, in this mentorship, one of the first few things he taught me is we were not going to give ourselves a bias. Now, this was more applicable to stocks at the time, but he said, we're, we're not going to give ourselves a bias on trying to research the CEO or what product is coming out or the news of this company. So all of my entire strategy is purely price action. Price. Okay. has nothing to do with the news that's coming out. Now, obviously- So you don't even get distracted with it. You're like, I, I can't, yeah, got it. Not even remotely, no. Okay. So that's that's okay. what uh, something that I kind of, now I don't think it would hurt. I think that maybe learning fundamentals could, if I can truly not let it um, give me a bias in my trades, I think there's nothing wrong with, you know, educating yourself in, you know, the instrument that you're trading, but- 100%. Making sure but it will give you a bias. It'll fuck you up. Like <laughs> I've been trading SPY basically for the last two years, SPY, Bitcoin, and NASDAQ only, no Forex pairs. And like, okay. I will have so many times it's happened to me where I'll have a bearish bias, especially this year, because NASDAQ's up 50%. Basically, it's pulled back to last two weeks, but it was up 50% for the year. I was yeah. bearish at the beginning of the year. And I'm like, why am I bearish based on my Twitter feed when the technicals are telling me to buy oh, and I'm enough. missing yeah. in-trend longs? You know, it's annoying. True. Yeah. So I, I guess I take pride in just not letting that. You should. That's a good pride. thing to be. That's, that's my lesson. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So talk to us about this trade. 
So this right here, if we can kind of visually see that there was, uh, it's not going to let me, but if we can kind of see, okay, point, 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 we've got an upward trend going here. Do, do, yep. do, do, do here. Yep. So we've got a break of the Anybody that's been following oil knows it's been bouncing hard. I think there's like a quadruple bottom oh at like God. 60 something. Or maybe it's like, Absolutely. yeah, there's a yeah. strong bottom. Yes. It's just been, oh my gosh, it's been kind of, let's see if we can look at the four hour. Yeah. Um, But it's been in consolidation for for quite a while and it's it's thrown me for a little bit of a loop because you you know that yeah, look i at that bottom look at that yes. 68 is that crazy uh, look at that it's just the four hits right there boom, boom, boom. yep yep so yep. after it bounced out of that it's been very bullish so yeah mm -hmm. definitely in an uptrend yes but it's been and also driving me crazy here but that that consolidation right there was i'm a trend line trader so i do not excel in in these ranges now right. there are strategies out there where it's truly for supply and demand, support and resistance. And, and they're they are crushing it. They're selling the top, yeah. buying the bottom. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yep. So what do you but do to wait for this to really pick up? Show me the yep. trend and then I'll I'll work you. Okay. Yep, absolutely. And one of my best, my best trades that I've ever had was finally the break out of this consolidation. Caught there that, went long. And now it's truly the only reason I got out of that trade, because we're looking at a four-hour time frame and we've got a beautiful upward trend. There yep. was no reason to get out of that trade until somewhere over here when it broke that trend. Yep. I, I really could have stayed in for longer. And that's just something as a trader that I have to work on myself. We're all working on that. <laughs> all of us, all of us are hold, trying to hold our winners longer, get out of our losers quicker. Yep. People, yep. people think, you know, after eight years of trading, Tori, that you would have all this shit figured out. But wouldn't you agree that you never have it 100%? It just the mistakes happen left often, left all, uh, less often, and they cost you less money, right? Let, less Austin. <laughs> they, happen less, less yeah, they happen less Austin, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but dude, yeah, like that's, there's things, but even as, you know, coming into eight years to where I'm, I'm building capital more and, and I'm able to take on a little bit more risk now and, yeah. and even struggling with that, or just seeing bigger numbers that I've had before. Like that's always going to be a thing, even though I've been trading for eight years, there's just, there's things in my psychology that I, that I'll never have down. Like that's, there's going to be new experiences always. always. So I think that's absolutely it. We, we don't have it all figured out. And there's going to be new things that we, we come to find out, you know, in our trading career, even after eight years. <laughs> A hundred percent, a hundred percent. So why did you, is this a short trade? Is that correct? Or is this so long? This is, yeah. So this was a short position here. If we come in a little bit closer, um, yeah. let's go back to the one hour so we can see a little bit better, but this was a That's short good position. Volume. Oh, and what's also funny is I, I don't trade with um volume either. So I don't, Me neither. I truly have almost just such a, now it's funny. I say a clean chart because some people get quite confused. They see all my lines and they're like, this looks like a laser show. But yeah, but you know what you're doing. You're you're looking for. Yeah. I mean, even after today, just talking to you, I understand now. You're looking okay, at the okay. two lines to understand which one is valid. You're not just yeah. picking one and hoping that this is the one that is in play. It makes sense, honestly. Out of a lot of, yeah. uh, I mean, everybody else is going to draw one diagonal line and just hope that it bounces the next time it comes back to it. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So that's that's the idea here. Is we're just looking for. We're trying to figure out which trend is it truly going to follow. It's like it kind of goes back to um to really maybe if you're within any industry you're trying to find out what the next trend is like you got to be ahead of the curve and that's yeah. me just trying to prepare myself or put myself in position for what that next trend is going to be so when one of these gets broken i can see all right now maybe this one is going to be truly the trend whether it's the upward or downward bullish or bearish and i'm okay with either one like i think that's also the main thing is i'm okay with either one happening so if i have yeah. to take a loss because I thought this was going to be the next trend and it wasn't. And then it turns out we're actually in some consolidation. I'm totally okay with that. Like that's, that's gotta be that's the key. Gotta be that's gotta be there. Gotta yeah. Be. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. This is awesome. I love this. When you use Tradezilla, would you recommend like a new trader use it or do you, cause I've had new guys tell me they don't need this yet. I think everyone should be using it. Wouldn't you agree? There's no reason Every, not to. Everyone should at least be able to track the, the progress. Look yeah. at your, can, can you see, are you seeing consistency in any shape or form? So yeah. I think being able to track that is going to be, is going to be huge. You got to yeah. be able to track your progress. hundred percent, hundred percent. Okay. Let me steal the screen back from you if you don't mind. Oh yeah. Perfect. So I want, I got two more things I want to ask you as I know we're coming up on our hour. Oh, talk to me. I know it'll fly by because we, we're very <laughs> similar. We both been trading a long time. So I figured we could, we could have kept going. We'll have to do a part two, Tori. <laughs> Typically what I do is at the end, I'll ask everybody listening and watching, make sure put them some comments in there, any questions, and then we'll do part two and go through the comments. Oh, you never know what you'll get in the comments. Um, <laughs> so my two other th things I wanted to hear from you on funding companies. I don't hear you talking about that too much. 
on social. Mm-hmm. And of course, I'm not seeing everything you post, but tell me about that. What are your thoughts on the funding companies? Because I'm sure you talked to them in Miami and everybody's talking mm-hmm. about this. So what are you thinking about all that right now? So I had no experience with it prior to. So my trading career, I had never even known that was a thing. So when okay. I, the, the funded trader is a funding company that approached me as a trader to make content for them. And when they did, I had no freaking idea what they were. I was like, so wait, let me let me wrap my head around this. I had to do some serious, I had to talk to my uncle. He didn't know what they were. I'm like, well, because eight what? years ago, the only firm was FTMO and like everyone thought they were a scam back then, right? Well, and even my uncle had no idea what it was. So no. I didn't even and know. And now that. look at it. Now it's ridiculous. Now everybody has their own firm. Yes. Well, yeah, I know. It's crazy. <laughs> but I had to truly do my research and say, okay, what is this? And I'm like, okay, so you, now the, the concept made sense. So you have to prove yourself. I'm like, okay, okay. So you got to prove yourself to, to have access to this capital to be able to trade this large amount. And I'm like, oh, this seems like a, oh my gosh, incredible. But then I'm coming to find that I, I tried to give it, you know, an attempt myself. And I'm like, oh, okay. So these, these, um, these targets and these rules and these timelines that you have to abide by are quite strict, quite strict. So my dynamic strategy that has different risk every single time, I couldn't make it work. And it, it was a little bit of a bummer. I mean, I could, I'm sure that I could try to modify my strategy in, in a way to where- I think it, I it, actually it have heard works. you say this before. That that's the reason you haven't gone and really pushed this yes. funding thing is because of the way you yeah. trade. But my audience, a lot of them trades prop firms. So I'm like, oh, well, let's let's try to you know find a common ground here. Let me see if I can attempt this. And I haven't been able to modify my strategy yet to, to make it work. So- and, that, and then that kind of goes to show that, okay, there are some strategies that are so strict. They are like they, to the T, to the tick, to the pip, like that work for funding firms. And I, mine doesn't. And I'm, I'm so happy and satisfied with my personal account and my strategy. Why would like, you? I'm yeah, you don't need it. to right now. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah. You know, and it's interesting because the rules, I worked at a prop firm called T3. Okay. They're, still, they're still around. It's a New York-based prop firm. They're focused on stock traders, but their prop model is not like this. They're like SMB Capital. They're like one of the old prop models where you want to come in here, we will educate you. We'll start you small. And if you do well, we'll slowly size you up. And we're only going to hire certain people. You got to have a good resume. You got to pass three interviews, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. That firm, that model is based on finding successful traders. People like yourself, they would want to reel you in. The model now that all of the firms do, except those firms, whether it's FTMO, my forks, it's all these models are based on traders failing. There are some traders that they put on the A book and they have, but these companies are making $10 million a month, $12 million a month off people failing and buying more challenges, not off people making a ton of money trading. You know what I'm saying? No, there are yes. people, but there's so few people that are able to stay funded and get paid out. It's very, very small. So it is just very <laughs> different. You know what I mean? Where you're you're making money and you're doing well as a company when traders are failing. You know what I'm you saying? Know, it's, it gets sticky, but then it kind of goes back to like, okay, so and this is one thing that my uncle asked me about. He was like, let me hear what you think about this. And is it, does it make you feel weird? He's like, you know, when it comes to the stock market, like if you make a thousand bucks, somebody else just lost a thousand bucks. You had to, how does that make you feel? Is that a weird thing to kind of wrestle with? And I'm like, I think that's just the name of the game. So I didn't have an issue with it, but absolutely I could see how I'm just like, Oh, that's a little sticky taking yeah, somebody's dollars. That's the way that this is. Like that's the way this business has been before you and me were even thoughts in someone's mind as children. Like this this business has been <laughs> exactly. eat what you kill and then you're taken from somebody else always, you know. So that's just it. Right. Great answer. Great answer. So tell me last last thing. Talk to us about mm-hmm. your daily routine. I probably could have asked you this in the beginning, but I'm curious to know like <laughs> okay. in Miami versus Tennessee, is there a big difference? Do you follow the same routine typically? Tell us about that. Um, oh, night and day difference between Nashville and Miami. Nashville. Literally I'm, you're up all night and you're sleeping. Next, it, right. <laughs> the, yes. That is exactly it. Like family in Nashville. That's my time is completely consumed by family, mom, sisters, nieces, nephews. We're going to the pool, like all the family fun things. Um, yeah. And then I'm still, I'm trading only when my alerts go off. So that's, that's truly like, it's just a slower life out there for sure. Yeah. Yes. And then Miami, as far as like, um, I, I don't think I've slept. <laughs> like, no, <laughs> we don't sleep. People are like real, bro. at midnight working out. At like oh yeah. No, it's work. crazy. It's crazy. Y'all don't sleep it's just different. 
It's different. Well, because I think in Miami, there's such a big nightlife scene where it's like there, it is one of those cities where a lot of people are sleeping during the day and it's not yeah. as busy during the day, except at the beach. And yeah. then everything gets busy at night when everybody comes out. Do you exactly. feel like one of those areas plays into better trading? Like, are you, I mean, you're swing trading. So I feel like it probably isn't that big of a difference because you're it's not, not right. It's not a huge difference. I would say since, since I'm letting the trades come to me, now, being able to to capitalize, now, I'm, I'm also trading from my phone. I don't know if many people know that either, but I place all my trades from my phone. Um, since it's such a simple strategy and I'm just drawing trend lines, it can be done on the phone. Um, it's, it's, it's a simple strategy, so I, I do it from my phone, but putting myself in a, a position to be able to take the trade. So, like, when I'm with family, I'm a little bit more distracted because there's babies running around. And I'm just like, if I get an opportunity, I'm just like, ah, that's okay. But right. here, like, I, I've taken a lot of opportunities. Like, you right. saw that entire there was a, a week where I took like three trades or four trades. Yep. And yep. so you're, you're focused. You're still locked in. Yeah. 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 What about physical fitness? How's, how's the difference in like fitness? Cause I saw you got a personal trainer, right? Yeah. Yeah. He's the I, one I that, like that. Trainer out here. It's pretty funny, actually. That's so <laughs> um, funny. I'm dude. The fitness has been incredible. Having a personal trainer, first of all, is a game changer. He 100%. is helping me with my nutrition. Like I've got these meal preps that I'm walking yep. home with, you know, on yep. Mondays and Wednesdays. I'm yep. making sure I'm hitting my my macros. I've never even done that before. And I'll right. be honest with you, macros mean cracking them. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> the the lifting, the like it's it's different when someone is is like standing right next to you and they're like, okay, you can do this, like three more, versus if you go work out by yourself, you're just like, well, I'm happy with this. Isn't just, that like so funny? <laughs> We're like disciplined as fuck when it comes to trading. But if you put me in an empty gym, bro, I'm playing on my phone. I'm yes. like listening, I'm not yes. sweating. But then I go to the gym class with the trainer and I'm drenched it's like a totally exactly. different person it's yeah. wild it's wild yeah. and that's yeah. one thing that i did want to talk to some people they they truly think that like your your discipline in trading is a reflection of your lifestyle and i gotta be totally honest with you i'm not i'm not incredibly disciplined like i don't wake up at 6 a.m make my bed and i'm ready to go for the day like Same. i'm a very relaxed person in, i think i gym. used to be but we're getting old tori that's really what it is we're getting old we're slacking on our routine our discipline <laughs> might need that extra hour of sleep we're enjoying life yeah. a little bit right that's really what yeah, it, you exactly. know exactly when i was broke i was disciplined as fuck up at 4 a.m but but now you get a little you know like how you make a little money get a little fat you know what i'm saying that's what people yeah. do for the most <laughs> exactly. but there is a line there's definitely a line like you were saying like you want to be able to say yeah i'm not the most disciplined when it comes to making my bed but like what the fuck does that actually mean for my day versus i'm going to exactly. give my discipline to my trading where it fucking matters and pays my bills 100 percent. yeah i love it tori this has been great I really, really Dude, enjoyed the I, I knew we would have a good conversation. I, I was just waiting for the right time to uh, to get this done. So this would be really good to hear, hear what the audience has to say and see what we got to do for part two. And then whether I come see you in Tennessee, where are you in Tennessee? Nashville. Okay, cool. So my wife and I are thinking Nashville, Chattanooga, or Knoxville. Now, Ooh. Chattanooga, too liberal, I think, maybe. You think so? I mean, I live I in would... St. Pete now where it's kind of liberal. Oh, I see, I see, I see. And I don't love I... it. I've been looking at Zwillow. I was looking, yeah. I kid you not, like two nights ago, look on Zwillow in chat and in Nashville. And so then I got like, friends oh, in chat and they, okay. and it's, it's, it's a great spot. I, I mean, so we would consider it, especially because yeah. she wants to be near the mountains. And I mean, cost of living in Florida to buy a house right now, especially with interest rates so high, it's crazy. At least in Tennessee, you still get some space and you're not on top of people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Here, you're just on top of people and they could be yeah. selling crack next door. At least you got a nice <laughs> friendly neighborhood in Tennessee with some nice Southern people. Did you right. notice that in, in Miami, the people here in Florida, they're not like Southern people. Like, yes, honey, yes, ma'am, no, sir. They're not like that. But in Tennessee, they, they're they everybody, yes, sir, oh. no, ma'am. Oh That's my what God. I need. I need that. I need some fucking manners, bro. Cause these people are running amok out here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you gotta get but, that yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. <laughs> Exactly. You, you see, you got it. See, I got to practice. But yeah, when I when I when we come out to Tennessee, maybe we'll do one in person. That'd be good because we're looking oh, that'd at be amazing. Nashville. Yeah, yeah. I got some other traders out there. We'll have to do a little meetup or something to be fun. Heck yeah, I'm so down. Okay. Well, listen, Tori. Great hour. I appreciate you very much, audience. Tori, where do you want me to send them? Twitter, Instagram. What's the best thing for you? Um, let's send them to my Insta. That's my biggest following at cool. Tori Trades. And I'll put the link for that in the description, everybody. We appreciate you, Tori. Thank you. Listeners, thank you. Make sure you're subscribed, everybody. We'll see you in the next episode. And Tori, thank you again. Thank you for having me. This is awesome.